Now, uh, the Republican Party recently revealed their outline for so-called tax reform, okay? Now, the outline is very vague. Uh, there's not a lot of detail in it, but the main takeaway is when reading their outline is that they really, really, really want to cut taxes on the very rich in corporations. Now, some of the tax cuts in there also, you know, to throw a little bit of a bone towards the middle class, cuts it a little bit for them. Um, can't really t cut taxes too much for the poor because they already don't pay a lot of taxes. So while we don't have all the details yet, and, and look, they don't, we don't have the details because they haven't figured out how to balance the numbers. We do have some of what they're planning to do in this outline. So I'm going to go uh, into detail about that. And hey, unsurprisingly, it does not match up with the rhetoric about what this plan actually does. Now, uh, for example, earlier this week, um, Gary Cohn said that the rich are not getting a tax cut under this plan. Can you guarantee that President Trump won't get a tax cut under this plan? George, when we've looked at the tax plan and we look what it does for Americans, we are very confident that Americans are getting a great deal here. We have also said that wealthy Americans are not getting a tax cut. We have designed a tax plan that is stimulant for the economy where we are giving tax cuts to middle and lower income Americans. We want everyday hardworking Americans to have more money in their paycheck. Your audience watching TV now, getting ready to go off to work, we want to find a way to put more money back in their paycheck. Will the wealthy get a tax cut or not? The wealthy are not getting a tax cut under our plan. That's not the evidence that's out there so far, but of course there are a lot of details yet to come. As you have pointed out, Congress has to deal with it. We'll see what happens in the next several months. <laughs> no, no. George, you had it right there. You had it right the first time. The wealthy are getting a tax cut, a gigantic tax cut, a huge one. Uh, I know, I know, I know what he's doing, right? Oh, no, no, no. We got to be fair to a Republican guy um, because... Well, well, not all the details are out. So, And maybe they'll close loopholes for the rich. Well, they always say they're going to close loopholes for the rich, but they never do. They never do. So, and look, in the rare occasion that they actually do close a loophole, they just create another one. So, look, that's the thing. Um, the whole claim that we're not cutting taxes from the rich, when you're obviously cutting taxes for the rich, absolute bullshit, right? Any plan that includes reduction in the in the tax rates is a tax cut, and that's exactly what this does. Now, look, conservatives will love to point out how wealthy people will they pay out most of the taxes, right? And that's true. According to the Treasury Department data, the top 10% of income earners in 2016 paid 80% of individual income taxes. The top 20% paid 94.8% of all the taxes, and the top 0.1% paid. 24.5% of all the taxes. So, look, it makes sense that they pay all the taxes because they've got all the money. <laughs> okay? Now, that, of course, will lead you to a different conversation, a conversation that uh, probably we'll have in another video or something. But basically, the whole point is when you cut income tax rates, it usually results in a lot of money for the rich. Usually. It depends on what uh, taxes you cut. And in this case, a lot of the taxes that are cut are taxes that the rich will pay. For example, uh, the Trump tax plan would drop the top bracket from 39.6% to 35% uh, and will allow the possibility of a 25% top rate threat uh, through a pass-through entity. It presumably would also eliminate a 3.8% uh, Obamacare tax on investment income that only hits upper income uh, taxpayers. Now, look, I don't know what that looks like to you, but to me, that looks like a big tax cut for the rich. <laughs> now, not only that, but the Trump tax plan would also eliminate the alternative minimum tax paid for mostly by the wealthy. Now, finally, um, the tax plan also calls for eliminating the estate tax. Now, currently, the estate tax is only estimated to affect about 5,500 estates out of the nearly 3 million estates because as much of $11 million can be shielded from federal taxation. But of course, the rich will not benefit at all from this tax cut. That's crazy. No, no. What that is, 
it is, is, is what Gary Cohn was saying is a complete and utter fabrication. The entire point of this tax reform bill is to cut taxes for the rich and corporations. And they've sent out Gary Cohn to lie to your face. Now, finally, uh, we had a White House official uh, came out who, who came out later and said, quote, we strongly believe that the final tax bill will not cut taxes for the wealthy as a class. But there is no way to solve for every single individual in the country. Oh, we believe it won't cut taxes for the rich. I mean, that's not our goal. But if it does cut taxes for the wealthy, well, golly gee, we, I guess we couldn't really help it. We might as well just do it anyway. No, that is a complete load of horseshit. Now, speaking of horseshit, let's go to Steven Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary. Uh, now, he claims that these tax cuts will magically give us incredible growth. In an interview on Fox News, he claimed that not only would there be $2 trillion worth of growth, but it will also cut deficits by a trillion dollars. Now, uh, based on what? Like, where, where's his numbers? Where's his research? Is there any data or facts backing him up? Absolutely not. He says that uh, this is more trickle-down economics. This is uh, a result of if you cut taxes, you're going to get magical economic growth. It doesn't work, though. And, and by the way, he's also saying, well, we're not cutting taxes on the rich. Well, then who are you cutting taxes on? Certainly not so much the middle class. Yes, they get a small tax cut. I'll go over that in another video. But the majority of the tax cuts go to the very wealthy. And we've already tried that. And guess what? That does not create economic growth. In fact, we've cut taxes for the rich for over 30 years. And still, where's the economic growth? Oh, but by the way, they're totally not cutting taxes for the rich. So says Gary Cohn. Uh, and even if they did, it will create growth and cut deficits. And also a magic unicorn will go and shit out gold bricks for everybody. Hey, man, sign me up. Who doesn't need a gold shitting unicorn? It, again, this is, this is nonsensical. It's the same sort of bullshit voodoo economics that even Republicans used to be like, oh, pff, come on, that's crap. Now they've all embraced it. And they all are like, yes, tax cuts, more tax cuts for my donors, for the rich. Yes, yes, give me more tax cuts. We got to pass more tax cuts. Look, the result of this, and we already have case studies. We can already see the overall effect on the economy of the Bush tax cuts, which again created gigantic deficits. I mean, look, according to the Nonpartisan Committee for the Responsible Federal Budget, by the way, this is a Pete Peterson conservative foundation, right? Even they're like, yeah, no, no, you cut taxes on the rich, you're going to lose $2.2 trillion over the next 10 years in government revenue. If you actually do care about a balanced budget, which they obviously do not, then you won't cut taxes on the rich. And, and they're all making this assumption like, no, no, I don't, you don't understand. They're going to invest. They're going to do all this stuff. Uh, and it's going to create massive economic growth. But we have not seen that. That is a complete lie. And not only that, but uh, they also added the possible interest on the debt. $2.2 trillion. If that's not bad enough, if that's not enough of a budget buster for some of these so-called fiscal conservatives, that additional interest on the debt according to this group would increase by 2.7 trillion dollars yeah but jeff economic growth you don't understand again we, we have <laughs> we have examples of this we've done this already it doesn't work but yet they claim that it pays for the for itself but if you ask any serious economist they'll tell you that the math just does not work Here's the reality on this, okay? Now, the Congressional Budget Office under Douglas Holtz Eakin. Now, this guy is a Republican, right? In 2005, estimated that a 10% reduction in federal income tax rates would have macroeconomic feedback, so that's the whole economy, of between 15 and 30%. In other words, he says that a $1 trillion tax cut might yield $150 billion to $300 billion in additional revenue. That still means a reduction in revenue 
of a much as uh, of as much of uh, as uh, seven hundred billion dollars. Holtzikin also wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post earlier this year talking about this subject, uh, saying that proposing trillions of dollars in tax cuts and then casually asserting that such a plan would pay for itself with growth is detached from empirical reality. Not only that, but you have the biggest patron saint of tax cuts, Ronald fucking Reagan, who predicted that revenues would fall, and they did, as a result of his 1981 tax cut. In fact, later on, that tax cut, he's like, yeah, I'm going to have to raise taxes several times in order to make up for this gigantic budget shortfall. Now, what's important about this and why I bring up Reagan is that, well, you also have Bruce Bartlett, right? Bruce Bartlett helped craft that 1981 tax cut as a congressional aid. He now says that's a complete mistake. Responding in the Washington Post to Mnuchin's claim, he said that, quote, in reality, there's no evidence that a tax cut now would spur growth. Furthermore, he argues that tax increases on the wealthy actually do not harm growth. It actually helps growth in many cases. He said the flip side of tax cut mythology is the notion that tax increases are an economic disaster. And of course, unfortunately, we have politicians on both sides, Democrats and Republicans, that are like, no, we must lower taxes on corporations, and then we're going to get economic growth. Well, that's a fallacy. And we have a lot of these corporate Democrats that have strayed away from Keynesian economics are now believing in and buying into this trickle-down bullshit. Now, he says, the reason in theory every Republican in Congress voted against the tax increase proposed by Bill Clinton in 93, yet the 90s was the most prosperous decade in recent memory. At 37.3% aggregate real GDP growth in the 90s exceeded that of the 1980s, which of course, a lot of conservatives are like, no, we had massive economic growth in the 1980s because of Ronald Reagan and his tax cuts. Well, we had even more growth in the 1990s and we had tax increases under Bill Clinton. Hmm, that's interesting. They never bring that up. Uh, now, in the next paragraph, he actually also rails against the Bush tax cuts. He said, quote, Despite huge tax cuts almost annually during the George W. Bush administration that cost the Treasury trillions in revenue, according to the CBO, growth collapsed in the first decade of the 2000s. Real GDP rose just 19.5%, well below its 90s rate. So again, we have empirical evidence that this does not work. And they know this. And look, the real reason they're doing tax cuts is because they want their money. This is about greed. Both the wealthy politicians and their donors, they just want more money. Okay. And of course, other than getting paid, the politicians also want to shrink government. Now, why is that? Well, look, when their plan leads to massive debts, Right When they cut taxes and suddenly, oh, we can't afford any of these things. Well, they go on to claim that it's not the tax cuts that did it, that bankrupted the government. No, it's the social programs. It's food stamps, things like Social Security and Medicare that are bankrupting the country. So they go out there. They talk about how we need to, we need to reform Social Security. We need to reform Medicare uh, so we can reduce this gigantic debt burden that we've placed on the country. Uh, on the young people, oh, we can't leave our young people with so much debt. Can't do that. Oh, we're going to have to privatize it. And when they privatize it, especially when it comes to Social Security, and they already have plans out there to do so, well, who does that leave your retirement, your Social Security in the hands of? Stephen Mnuchin's banker friends. Gary Cohn's banker friends at Goldman Sachs, who can then take your retirement and make a fortune off gambling in the Wall Street casino. This is what tax reform is actually all about. So don't be fooled by bullshit promises of economic growth because I can assure you that they cannot that or they, they that they do not and have not ever existed. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.